This is defending the Immaculate. Together, we defend the honour of our Blessed Mother. Confirmed by the apparitions of Mary, why would the apparitions of the Virgin Mary have any significance on whether she is immaculate, free from sin, from the first moment of her conception and her entire life? Why would apparitions make a difference? Are apparitions possible? Is it credible? The Bible actually shows humans receiving visions of angels and saints all the time. You go through the Bible, I remember I did this as a teenager once, looking through, I was interested in angels at the time, I still am. Angels appear on nearly, nearly every page of scripture appearing to people. And there are also saints appearing to people. Angels of course appearing to Adam and Eve and Moses and the mother of Samson. Saints of course. Saint Paul has a vision of our Lord himself after our Lord's resurrection. So that's an apparition of our Lord. Then there's a transfiguration in which Moses and Elijah appear. And then at the time of the resurrection of Christ, we're told that various saints of the Old Testament appeared to individuals in Jerusalem. That's in Saint Matthew's Holy Gospel. There are also holy people receiving prophetic messages from heaven. Of course, the three wise men, the three holy kings, receive a message from heaven, warning them not to go back to Herod. Saint Paul has this apparition message of a man from Macedonia, calling him to come to Macedonia and preach. It's some kind of vision. And then Agabus, the prophet, receives a message from heaven about a coming famine and it's reliable it comes true of course we are told to test the spirit because there are false apparitions and false messages but we're not to despise prophetic messages saint paul says that do not despise the gift of prophecy or the prophet among you in fact scripture has an apparition of Our Lady, of course appearing to Saint John, both under the guise of the Ark of the Covenant and as mother of all believers. Remember, Saint John sees this vision of the Ark going into the sanctuary of heaven and then immediately afterwards the vision is of the woman clothed with the sun, the moon on her feet, giving birth to a child who will rule the nations with a rod of iron our Lord and then we're told that this woman is the mother of all Christians in that same book so there is an apparition of Our Lady in Scripture and apparitions are possible as I've already shown they can be reliable so such apparitions could confirm or challenge practices or opinions how do the apparitions confirm or challenge the truth of the Virgin Mary or the claim that the Virgin Mary is immaculate, free from sin, from the first moment of her conception? Well, at Lourdes, the Virgin Mary appeared to Saint Bernadette in 1858. The Virgin Mary declared, I am the immaculate conception. In fact, she declared, I am the Immaculate Conception, just four years after the Church had solemnly defined that the Virgin Mary was free from original and actual sin. So it was like Our Lady was appearing to confirm, yes, I am the Immaculate Conception. The Church, as I mentioned in a previous video, is infallible, guided by God continually guided by the Holy Spirit, especially at ecumenical councils, following on from the Council of Jerusalem and in the solemn pronunciations of the Pope when he acts as a successor of Saint Peter with the power 
of the keys and that authority. But heaven also confirmed this truth. I am the Immaculate Conception. The truth of the Immaculate Conception of Our, of Our Lady was also taught by her in apparitions prior to that explicit dogmatic definition of the church in 1830. In 1830, Our Lady appeared to St. Catherine Labore, and the saint was compelled to utter the prayer, O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. In fact, the saint had a vision of that prayer being written. That was prior to the dogmatic pronunciation. And then obviously, much earlier, there have been apparitions teaching the truth, where Our Lady is teaching the truth of her Immaculate Conception, such as in 1581 in Guadalupe, in Mexico, there is that miraculous image that appears on the tilma of Saint Juan Diego, which has a virgin standing on top of the serpent, signifying, as I've shown in an earlier episode, her victory over the Satan, over the evil one, and thereby her freedom from sin. All modern approved apparitions of Our Lady where the church has tested the spirit and has confirmed, yes, this is from heaven. All of those apparitions, indeed, many of the apparitions that have been tested and found wanted, actually, these apparitions repeat the same message, that Our Lady was free from original sin. Indeed, the messages are important because they are reasserting, in saying that Our Lady is free from original sin, it's reasserting the reality that the world, except for Our Lady, is under original sin. And our world denies that, doesn't it? It ignores the reality of original sin, thinks we're all great, we're all fine, we're all going to heaven. The apparitions of Our Lady that state her freedom from sin remind us all the more that the grace of Christ alone can free an individual from sin and hell its terrible consequence. Our Lady is free from sin, not because of herself, but because of the merits of Christ applied to her at the moment of her conception. She is the Immaculate. May the Immaculate Virgin Mary intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.